Okay, so first talk to me, obviously you were back at ISD. How cool is it to have the Olympic trials here once again? Well, it's uh, needed for the sport of wrestling to be able to have a site that we fill the arena. And Carver Hawkeye, uh, we fill the arena here. You know, it's like... Um, we have a lot of Iowa fans here today, but uh, we didn't have a lot to cheer about, so that's not as good as we would like. But there's so many good wrestlers, whether it be female, male, Greco-Roman, freestyle, that there's there's good bouts. And, and actual fans can appreciate that. And that's why, you know, they um, when you're not winning yourself, uh, you, you follow the United States of America. So, you know, it's been a decent first day of fire, and we got another day tomorrow. We got some more Iowa kids tomorrow. Well, I, to raise the roof off this place, uh, I think some of the Iowa kids have to win more. And I know last time they had record breaking crowds, like over fifteen thousand people attending. Well, you know, they, we needed a little help during the day to get those Iowa guys in the finals, and because of that, we might not have that record breaking crowd because uh, I mean, it's still good. But it's like uh, you need a little help sometimes to draw in that last two or three thousand seats, and uh, you know maybe tomorrow because we have some uh, good tough Iowa kids wrestling. How proud are you to have the Olympic trials? Well, I think it means a lot to the state, and that uh, means a lot to uh, the world of wrestling because you know when you go places that it's really popular, uh, they they really kind of follow it closer when it's at a very popular place for the sport, and so like. Iran, uh, Russia, you know, South Korea, just wherever you go, North Korea, I mean, they'll tune in here uh, because there'll be a lot of media and they'll follow our, our trials. And what are you looking most forward to in the coming days with these trials? You know, I'm looking to always promote the sport. You know, and if I, you know, if I, anytime that I can do that, I feel good. Uh, you know, I, I'm having a hard time jumping for joy right now because I think we could have promoted better today from the standpoint of some locals winning. And because of that, you know, I can't, I don't want to show that dissatisfaction. But, but uh, you know, you got to have some help in the sport. And um, it's good, but I like it to be great. Yeah. Do you have anything else that you want to add about the trials or the sport of wrestling? Anything that you want to say? I just think that... Uh, you know, the main thing that I think about our sport is that, you know, we, we suffered a little bit of a blow a few years ago, about three years ago, and we, we actually worked really well together to get it back, and I think we've got to be, um, use that, more of that mentality all the time instead of just in an emergency type of uh, mode. So, that's the main thing. But, uh, no, we've got a great sport. I got a little coach in me, and so I'm not jumping for joy right now. But uh, I'm, I, I love it that we have USA Wrestling here with uh, the Olympic Trials. What do you see for the future of the sport of wrestling? I think I've got a lot going. Uh, you know, I think that we can build off of uh, what we uh, kind of fell down to, but we're building back up. And it's been a hundred years in Iowa for college wrestling, for uh, high school wrestling. We're not really letting up. It's just a matter of keeping up with. What you think it can be. So you know when you when you're looking at football, basketball, baseball, some of the more mainstream sports all over in the United States. Uh, you know you say, well, we, we need to get to a higher level so we can get more media and get more followers. So, so on that three, you know, you know, and then you look at the, the schools in Iowa. You know we have a lot of national titles, and we want to keep those going. Uh, right now, Penn State's got a long way in Ohio State, but you know, but. but uh, Warbirds uh, still doing well. Uh, you know, we got a lot of those Division three schools. NAI school over, you know, in uh, excuse me, in, in Des Moines, won four or five national titles in a row. You know, so you know, we won the, we keep up with the community colleges. We're winning national titles. So when the Division one lets up a little bit, we have some good backup. But we like to have it start from the top. You know, and and then everybody's happy. So, so then maybe I'll smile a little more. <laughs> Coach Gable, you talked a little bit about being a little disappointed about today. What do you think needs to happen for the Iowa wrestlers to get back on top again? I think uh, we, if you watch the matches, you know, and I'm, I'm, I don't know if you call me an expert or not, because, you know, they say I'm, I haven't coached for a long time, but, you know, I don't think I've lost too much just because I, never, I don't get away from the sport. But, you know, I just, uh, I saw some positioning, like, 
they were like, they didn't know where they were at a couple of times. And when you get to this level, you got to know where you're at. And if you been in those positions before, you should know where you're at. So we made some uh, mistakes, silly mistakes that really, uh, you know, when you do something enough times, you don't make those mistakes. So you're obviously you got to analyze maybe uh, how you're practicing, for example. You're uh, very passionate about the sport. You do a great job of promoting the sport. What is your uh, advice to people and your recommendations for those of us who want to help you grow the sport? Well, I think the big thing is that uh, you keep up with what's current and with the major organizations. So, you know, you keep up with, you know, it's pretty easy to keep up with Iowa wrestling when you're local here at the at Division One level. But it's a little bit harder with USA wrestling. And you, all you have to do is go to themad.com and you keep up with it, for example. And then you can follow around the world. Uh, and then there's, you know, you just, then you learn, like, who's in charge. So when, if you have something once every four years, you know, you come here educated a little bit more. So it's like we went to IOC, the International Olympic Committee, you know, you know, you know those three terms, those three letters, you got to know that. Then we had FILA, those are uh, the four terms, but it's not no longer FILA, our governing body for wrestling. Now it's called UWW, UWW, United World Wrestling. So you got to understand that, you can go to their website. You know, then you, then you when you come here, you really kind of know who's really good. Like, like Pico has kind of worked his way into the finals and if you've been following Pico since ninth grade four years ago you know then you're you know you you got something to really follow right through to uh, possibly to uh, Rio but you know he hasn't made a team yet but you you know you can hook up and and it, it's just there's a lot more meaning when you really know who's involved you know and, and speaking of Aaron Pico and his success what is your opinion on the on the wrestlers that decide not to go the collegiate route and just go straight to freestyle Greco you know it's you know I I probably am not a guy that would do that or even recommend that. But, you know, when, when it comes time to, like, decide that, there's other decisions, you know, like maybe financial decisions, and you can bypass things. Because uh, I think he's hooked up with also maybe the MMA a little bit. And so, you know, it's to each their own. And, you know, if he makes the work, you know, I think, I think his track was to make the world an Olympic team and then move on and uh, he'll find out tonight, I guess, whether he's on, on that track. But, uh, uh, you know, I, I think it's pretty unusual and I think you miss a lot in the sport when you bypass high school wrestling and college wrestling. That's a lot of great uh, times. <laughs> a lot of great times. You said I obviously I love huge wrestling state. All these I went upstairs, all these young kids are here watching. How great is it to you know, see that, interact with that? No, it's anytime you host an event that is very meaningful and you can get the youth of of your country there, that's gonna help perpetuate what you wanna see. Now, again with the crowd, crowd going crazy, which I think tonight there'll be some really good situations where the crowd can get into it, even though they're not Iowa people. And with that in mind, I think we'll actually do what we're talking about here. We'll further develop our sport. But when they have the name and they already know it, that's just automatic. But, you know, with different names, now we'll see if our sport actually generate some enthusiasm, which I think it does. Now, there's some rules that are better than they were last time, four years ago, and I'm still not, you know, I'm, I don't hear it. There's music going on, and you can probably hear it right in the background. I don't hear that, but some people might not like that. I don't, I think our show is should be wrestling, not music, to be honest with you. So, you know, I, I'm not necessarily for that. Or I think when you tie a match, whatever the score is, if it's tied, I think you should go overtime, you know? But there are, is a lot of culture in the last 15 years or so that, that a lot of Europeans and things like that, they like those big moves, and so they go for the bigger moves, and so that gives you more motivation to get a bigger move, because if it's a 4-4 match, and you got one four-pointer against four one-pointers, you win. So, and that big throw, might everybody might just go crazy as compared to just, yeah, one point, you know. But, so there's, there's more to it than just my looking at it. So I do know quite a bit about sport, and, you know, like I said, I don't even hear the music, and I would love to see overtime, but, you know, I'm, you know, I'm just one guy. You know, it is somewhat influential, but not totally. 
you know, for over 20 years, you know, you go back through the history of amateur wrestling, through college wrestling, and it was Iowa, Iowa, Iowa. Look at the world teams and Olympic teams. It was kids like the like the Bannock brothers and Randy Lewis just earning medal after medal. The brands. Now, in the brands, you bet. And, and, and nowadays, you're seeing kids from not only Iowa, but from all sorts of different schools. And, and you see the wrestling grow as it, as it does. And a lot of those guys that are coaching at the Ohio States and at the Wisconsin's, they're boys that you coached. How does it make you feel to see the wrestling grow the way it did from guys that you coached in college? I love the fact that somebody would be under the tutelage of myself and then they go out and do well. I love that, you know. And of course, you know, it's like my favorite schools are Iowa and Iowa State, you know, and, and uh, Iowa, you and I, but you know, outside the state, if you have, um, uh, well, Penn State's not not under me, but he was an Iowa Stater, you know, and so Ohio, Ohio State, uh, you know, right in there, and you got some, yeah, and you got Oregon State on the, on the West Coast, and, and you got Virginia Tech, uh, Kevin Dresser, I mean, Kevin Dresser won a national title up here. History. I'm, I'm looking. I'm looking more for creating new history in, in the future, and uh, that's that's what it's all about to me. I don't hang out too long with, with that, that boy, you know, that girl. I like what's current. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, Kenny. Real quick, created, you are history. Created an incredible mentorship program, and really creating so many great mentorships. I mean, coming out of the Iowa program of the 80s, what are your thoughts about the Olympic trials welcoming people? Now, wrestling on number four. Welcoming what? What is three thousand six hundred kilos in the red from Titan Part Three? Malibu, Belton, and the blue. No, I think. I think that's why the NGB has to welcome everybody who wants to say wrestling comes here because we, they have the best chance to uh, actually promote the sport, you know, because they're bringing more attention to it. And again, it's like, okay, so how much attention are we really bringing to it? Well, we're bringing way more than, than someplace else. But at the same time, we better bring some way better, you know. Uh, instead of having two or three cameras on me right now, let's go check out 35. That's our every state. So we still have a lot to grow in. And that's what people understand. I don't, I don't think anybody that likes to have the status quo kind of stay right. You know, we don't have to be that big. I think they're, they're kind of kidding themselves. Because you got to stay with what's um, really happening and, and shoot for that. Otherwise, you won't be an Olympic champion anyway. You just make the team and go get beat. <laughs> a couple weeks ago, with its director, Kyle Klingman. Well, that was at the, um, the U.S. Wrestling Kids, and uh, you know, every time I, uh, you know, go places, it, it still amazes me that people kind of. But you know, the book that I had put out, I guess not too bad a book, it made the New York Times bestseller list. So you know, what the heck, you know. So that kind of helps promote it, so people are interested. But you know, it's more than just wrestling. It's uh, you gotta hit, you gotta hit the mainstream, and when we get some of those mainstream to join us, then we're gonna be big stream. Of just main well, let's talk about some of the mainstream things. You're at a movie Fox capture that hit mainstream. <laughs> well, you know, it was, but it didn't get a lot of awards. In the red, I think some people liked it, some didn't. I like things that everybody likes. Coach Gable, I want to thank you for your time today. No problem. Appreciate it a lot. Thank you so much. It's been great interviewing you again.